object falling. But what I want to look at today is what happens when we throw something upward. So, moving over to the paper, let's suppose we have a man or a woman, as you choose, who throws the ball directly upward. Let's say he throws it up with a velocity of 30 meters per second. Let's shine a little light here. So, let's go ahead and make a dot diagram for what happens. We know after one second, the ball will move, uh, will slow down to 20 meters a second. After two seconds, 10 meters a second. And after three seconds, it will come to a stop. We know that at the highest point, called the apex, this is when velocity is zero. Really, I should put the equal there, I think. Uh, when velocity is zero, vertical velocity is zero. So every second, the ball slows down by 10 meters per second. That's acceleration, that's gravitational acceleration. On the way down, we can say the ball will go first 10 meters a second, then 20 meters a second, then 30 meters a second. All negative because they're going downward. Again, we can see the acceleration is 10 meters per second every second. Let's apply some math to this. So we want to know what time does it reach the apex? Well, for that, we can use VF equals VI plus AT. Because we know at the apex, the final velocity will be zero. Remember, the vertical velocity is always zero at the apex. Our initial velocity was 30. Our acceleration is always negative 10 while we're in free fall times time. Let's add 10t to each side. So we get 10t equals 30, divide both sides by 10, and we get t equals 3 seconds. Now what if we wanted to figure out total time in the air? Well now, there are two ways we could solve this. Let's first use vf equals vi plus at. Final velocity will be negative 30 because we know on its way down, it ends up going the same speed as it did on the way up, just in the opposite direction. Again, don't fire guns directly up into the air. The initial velocity is still 30. The acceleration is negative 10 because it's in free fall times time. Again, let's add 10t to each side. So we'll get, oh, let's not, because that's not combining like terms. Let's instead subtract 30 from each side. So I have negative 60 equals negative 10t. Divide both sides by negative 10. We get 10 or 6 seconds equals t. And that matches up with our dot diagram, right? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 seconds in the air. 6 seconds to return to where it started. Let's move this up a little so you can see the bottom. 6 seconds equals time. But I told you there was a second way to uh, solve for the total time in the air. We'll use our displacement formula. Notice the ball goes up and comes down to the same height. So our displacement is 0. The initial velocity is 30 times time plus 1 half Negative 10 is our acceleration times time squared. Let's subtract negative or let's subtract 30 from e 30t from each side. Negative 30t equals negative 5t squared. Let's divide both sides by negative 5t. Again, don't tell your math teacher that I'm doing this without doing uh, squares. So this would be six seconds equals t. Same answer. Notice this all came from us understanding that the ball ended up at the same height from which it started. We can do the same to figure out how high it goes. Pardon me for a second. We can uh, also do this for how high it goes. Now remember, how high is the 1 half at squared formula? And thus far, we have been 
using zero as our initial velocity. But that's not what we're going to do today. Today, we have an initial velocity of 30 meters per second. So we need to plug this in. So delta y equals vit plus 1 half at squared. Delta y is what we're looking for. 30t plus 1 half negative 10 t squared. Oh, we have the t, don't we? We know how long it took to get to the apex. 3 seconds. Delta y equals 30 times 3 minus 5 times 3 squared. Delta y equals 3 times 3 is 90 minus 5 times 3 times 3 is 9. Delta y equals 90 minus 45 for a total height at the apex, because the apex occurred at 3 seconds of 45 meters. That's it for today. Ask in live session if you have any questions.